Before we start exploring Newton's second law of motion, let us quickly revisit the idea of force and to do so we will push a 1 kilogram mass with an unknown force F and when we do this what you find is that the body is accelerating at 1 meters per second squared. Then we can define the applied force as 1 Newton. So what we are saying is that if we can make a body of 1 kilogram accelerate by 1 meters per second square, then the force acting on it must be 1 Newton. Now, if we double the force to 2 Newton, intuitively, we expect the body to accelerate by 2 meters per second square. And that's exactly what happens. So this relationship illustrates a fundamental principle acceleration is directly proportional to the applied force and this sets the stage for exploration of Newton's second law. And we will start with the definition of Newton's second law of motion and examine each part of it in minute detail. So the law says that the net force on a body is equal to the product of the body's mass and its acceleration. So the working definition of force could be that if a standard body of 1 kilogram has an acceleration of a meters per second square, then the force producing the acceleration has a magnitude of a newton. Or if you were to write an equation to represent the law, it would be f net is equal to m into a. And this simple equation can actually help you solve most numerical problems. But then you need to use the equation very carefully. And therefore, let us see each part of it now. So number one is we should identify the body to which we are applying the equation. Number two, we must identify all the forces acting on the body. Because you can see in the equation, we've put the subscript net, that is, we have to find the net force acting on it or the vector sum of all the force acting on the body. Number three is understanding the fact that this net force causes the acceleration. Often the students make the mistake of saying that a body of mass M has an acceleration A and therefore the resulting force is this. This statement would be incorrect because the acceleration is not causing the force. It's the other way around. Force causes the acceleration. So a body will first experience a force which would result in an acceleration. Next is once you have found the net force and let us say it is acting at an angle, then feel free to resolve it into its X and Y components. And then you can say that the acceleration in X direction is only because of the net force acting in the X direction. In other words, the net force acting in the Y direction has no role to play in acceleration of the body in X direction. Likewise, the acceleration in Y direction is only on account of the net force acting in the Y direction. And the net force in the x direction has no influence on the acceleration in the y direction. And of course, if you combine these two forces, you get the net force in this direction and the net acceleration also in this direction. Number five is that if a body is in equilibrium, that is all forces are balancing or the net force on it is zero, we could derive some interesting insights. So one could be, if the object is initially at rest, it will remain at rest. And why? Simply because the net force acting on it is zero, which means the acceleration should also be zero. Remember, acceleration happens only when force is present. And since there's no acceleration, the velocity cannot change and remains at zero meters per second. And you see the scenario directly connects to Newton's first law of motion, which states that an object at rest will stay at rest unless acted upon by an external force. The 
Other case could be that a body is moving with the velocity v and then it is subjected to forces whose vector sum turns out to be zero. So what do you think happens here? Well, the same reasoning applies. The body will continue to move with the same velocity v simply because there is no net force and therefore no acceleration to change its velocity. The velocity remains constant at v and the object continues to move in a straight line at a constant speed. And you can see that this also ties in with Newton's first law of motion, which states that an object in motion continues in its state of motion unless acted upon by an external force. So in both cases, the key is understanding that a net force of zero leads to zero acceleration and therefore the velocity remains constant. Whether the object is at rest or in motion, the absence of a net force ensures that its state of motion remains unchanged. So let us work on three simple situations that will help you to understand how you can use Newton's second law of motion. And what we have here is a mass of 0.2 kilograms and it is subjected to a force F1 of 4 Newton and we are asked to find the acceleration of the mass. So we have a mass and it is subjected to a certain force and therefore Newton's second law of motion would apply. And we could use the equation F net is equal to MA. So we will evaluate the left hand side of the equation first. And what we see is that the only force acting on the body is 4 Newton in horizontal direction. So we will put 4 Newton on the left hand side. Now this force of 4 Newton will accelerate the body. So on the right hand side we know the mass is 0.2 kilogram and we multiply it with A which we have to calculate and what you find is that A is equal to 20 meters per second square and the positive sign indicates that it is acting in the plus x direction which is also the direction of the force. In the second situation what we get is an additional force F2 that acts on the mass and its value is 2 Newton. Once again we will first find the left hand side of the equation and we can see that the net force would be the vector sum of F1 and F2 and let us use vector notation to arrive at the net force. So F1 is acting in the positive x direction and we write it as plus 4 Newton. F2 is acting in the negative x direction that is minus 2 Newton. Then we go ahead to the right hand side of the equation and we write it as 0 0.2 into A and when we solve for A, what you find is it equals 10 meters per second square. And we can see that the acceleration is still in the positive x direction. Primarily because the force acting in the plus x direction was greater than the force acting in the negative x direction. And that's why the acceleration is still in the positive x direction. The third situation has force F1 vanishing but F2 continues to act in the same direction and now another force F3 acts at an angle of 30 degrees and its magnitude is 1 Newton and we are asked to find the acceleration of the body. Now since force F3 is not acting directly in the direction of x-axis we will need to find the component of this force along the x-axis. And what we can see is that its magnitude will be F3 cos theta. So now we can write the equation F net is equal to MA as follows. On the left hand side, 
you have F3 cos theta acting in the positive x direction and force F2 acting in the negative x direction. And this should equal 0 0.2 into A in the x direction. And when we solve for AX, what we get is minus 5.7 meters per second square. So the acceleration is now in the negative x direction. So these examples illustrate how you should apply Newton's second law in various situations. But to get really good at this, I'd suggest you should head over to this playlist that has all the laws of Newton's explained in great detail. And please do give a thumbs up if you like the video, that will be helpful. Also, feel free to ask any question in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.